What if I told you a story of how the harsh and gritty environment of one of Earth's uninhabited islands led to noticeable physical and behavioral changes in less than 50 years? Remarkable or impossible? That was the story of some sheep that would become native to a lovely piece of land in New Zealand known as Campbell Island. New Zealand is known for its beautiful and breathtaking landscape. Laced with wildlife, some of its islands look like a picture straight out of a Disney movie where animals and people could be singing Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. It has several wildlife preserves, national parks, and quite diverse terrain. Now that we've set the scene, let's dial it back to the early 19th century where a captain and two of his employees found a small island in the Southern Ocean. Tucked neatly between the Auckland Islands and Cape Adair, Antarctica, the crew stumbled on this untouched paradise after nearly drowning at sea, a foretelling of the unforgiving harsh conditions the island could harbor. Captain Hasselberg and two others under the employ of Robert Campbell and Co. of Sydney were involved in a brutal shipwreck just off Perseverance Harbor. They then discovered Campbell Island, which soon became a site for sealing and whaling. When the seals were hunted to near extinction, the island was used primarily for whaling and would eventually become a major breeding ground for southern right whales. No longer untouched, Campbell Island saw the introduction of species that were not native to the island in a group of scientific expeditions. The islands saw the addition of rats, pigs, and eventually sheep in the late 19th century. Under New Zealand's lease system, a small starter flock was introduced, and within a few years their numbers had climbed into the low thousands. Being mostly merino or merino crossbreeds, these sheep were beautiful for their wool, requiring sheep farmers and shearers. By the early 20th century, estimates put the flock in the many thousands, requiring a seasonal workforce to manage them. But by 1929, after multiple changes in lease ownership and a slump in the wool and meat market, interest in the Campbell Island sheep had waned and care for the flock declined. Toward the end of the 1930s, the last settlers departed, leaving a flock far smaller than before, only a few thousand at most. Roughly two decades later, surveys suggested only several hundred remained. By the late 20th century, fences were built to section off the island. Most of the sheep were culled, and a small handful kept as a purebred flock. Yet in the decades between their abandonment and eventual removal, a distinct strain had taken shape on the Campbell Island sheep. Now, we're used to hearing the evolution of species taking thousands of years, or even millions. However, the harsh cold on Campbell Island, coupled with the lack of human protection and provision, led to drastic changes in behavior and the anatomy of the sheep left behind. This feral sheep flock did not just thrive by being wild, they transformed into a whole subspecies within just 50 years. Firstly, remember how these sheep were primarily domesticated on the island for their wool? Well, that means they would need to be sheared regularly to remain healthy and survive. Essentially, such sheep do not stop growing wool, and that excess wool could lead to several problems. For starters, there's the obvious fact that excessive wool can lead to blindness by obstructing the sheep's vision. A heavy fleece can also significantly weigh the sheep, making it harder to escape from predators or even forage for food, leading to starvation. From attracting more pests to increasing the risk of hypothermia and mating difficulties, lack of shearing for domesticated sheep breeds can be a major issue. Knowing all of that, it's no surprise that the island's sheep population drastically dropped when the animals were initially left to cater for themselves. But guess what? The Campbell Island sheep developed the ability to self-shear when it was needed, probably owing to natural selection, the harsh conditions, or random mutation. The point was that humans were no longer able to regularly remove the growing burden of wool on their bodies, and they found a way to do it themselves. What I find striking is that it's something other similar breeds have not been able to do yet. Campbell Island lies roughly 600 kilometers south of New Zealand and on the northwestern axis of the Antarctic continent. In fact, Campbell Island may be referred to as a sub-Antarctic island itself. The unforgiving icy winds, long winters, and extremes of day and night should have wiped out any farm population left without their carers. However, these resilient Campbell Island sheep developed two tactics to beat nature and stay alive. While other animals ran from the cold, shielding themselves in caves, these sheep simply turned their rares to the cold and kept their heads high. Unlike regular sheep that walked with their heads pointing downward, the Campbell Island sheep developed the habit of keeping their heads upright, often towards the sky. 
Furthermore, to keep life alive on a longer basis, the Campbell Island sheep began reproducing at a later age of above one year, in contrast to many domestic breeds that have offspring before a year, typically six to nine months expected by regular farm-bred sheep. This change allowed the sheep to grow older and tougher before committing to raising lambs. In addition, it may have added to the more resilient sheep being left for breeding while the weaker ones were weeded off. While regular sheep were practically spoon-fed, Campbell sheep soon realized that they did not have the luxury of a human provider anytime soon. This led to foraging on local plants and grass. However, the island saw a decline of some of its native birds, an ideal, palatable food for the sheep. Upon returning to observe the sheep on the island, scientists discovered that they had developed a somewhat deformed jaw structure. Rather than feeding off laid-down pasture, the sheep had to forage and pull edible vegetation where found. This task needed a different jaw from those of dependent sheep. When feeding, the Campbell sheep had a habit of bobbing their heads upward to pull the vegetation they found. This was so prominent that when the sheep were given animal feed, they either didn't know what to do with them or outrightly scattered them in an attempt to pull them from their roots. It was like giving a fragile chew toy to a feral dog. Let's just say you'd have no chew toy in a bit, and an angry animal due to the time wasted trying to chew the toy without food. Do you remember that Campbell Island could also be called a sub-Antarctic island? Well, that meant thicker layers of snow. The Campbell Island sheep were discovered to have longer legs than their predecessors, probably to traverse thicker inches of snow or to keep the core body temperature further from the freezing floors. We can only speculate. Besides, no formal measurements have confirmed these changes in leg length yet. It also helped that between the 1930s and the 1950s, the area saw warmer temperatures in general. It is theorized that this led to a more woody and herbaceous vegetation on the island. Some scientists believe that in addition to possibly developing longer legs and self-shedding fleece, the denser vegetation provided the food needed to keep the population of Campbell Island sheep. In fact, by the time culling would happen in the 1970s to 1980s, there was a notable increase in the population. From about a thousand in the late 1950s, there were roughly 3,000 sheep roaming freely on Campbell Island by the 1970s. By the closing decades of the 20th century, people had returned to Campbell Island, but the sheep left behind had changed beyond recognition. They were no longer docile farm animals. These were hardy, wild creatures, wary of people and sometimes outright aggressive. Years of isolation had shaped them, altered jaws from constant foraging, a taller build, coats that shed on their own, meat said to be unpleasant, and a slower path to maturity. Together with their feral instincts, these traits sealed their fate. But in 1970, a fence was set up to divide the island into northern and southern zones. The northern flock, likely numbering in the low thousands, was removed entirely, while a similar group continued to roam the south. Over the next decade, those southern sheep multiplied again, climbing into the several thousand range before being eliminated in the late 1980s. In the midst of this, a small rescue mission took place in 1975 to 1976. A handful of animals were captured and shipped to mainland New Zealand for a breeding program, with about 10 chosen to form the foundation of a carefully managed purebred line. By the end of the 1980s, not a single sheep remained free on Campbell Island. It's easy to feel sympathy for a species wiped out from a place it had come to call home, but the sheep were never meant to survive there on their own, and by the mid-20th century, the island's unique plant life was in serious decline. Species such as tussock grass, anastome, azarella, and plurophyllum were pushed to the brink. Declared a nature reserve, the island was set on a course for ecological recovery. Removing the feral sheep through fences and systematic culling was viewed by many as a grim but necessary step to restore the balance. Ecologically, after the culling, there was a reset in the natural flora back to what it was before the wake of the 20th century, so maybe the feral sheep were really out of place and would have permanently disrupted what was naturally present, especially since they were now difficult to domesticate and thus control. 
Thankfully, it was the end for this new subspecies. Remember how I mentioned that some sheep were collected and taken to New Zealand in 1975 and 1976? Well, this was done due to the fascination of seeing sheep that were resilient and so well adapted to such harsh conditions they were capable of surviving on their own. Conservationists were also fascinated by the multiple changes in anatomy and behavior that allowed gentle sheep to survive in conditions like sub-Antarctica. In addition to their morphology, they were able to give birth to lambs while standing, with their lambs being able to walk in minutes, although some scientists speculate this trait was inherited from ancestral stock rather than developing spontaneously. Either way, they had become genetically adapted to harsh survival, and it was a true marvel. Conservationists took special care of the ten sheep selected and kept them in New Zealand's mainland. Eventually, they passed them down to breeders who took special care of this exceptional breed. They grew this population to a number, usually not known, until some sheep were stolen and slaughtered in the early 21st century. With lighter fleece, it is assumed that the theft and slaughtering happened solely for the meat. Ironically, this action baffled breeders as the sheep were not expected to be edible or desirable, even. After the incident, only around 30 of the Campbell Island sheep were still alive. This showed the grim fate and struggle faced by rare breeds in conservation. Interestingly, Campbell Island saw a restoration of most of its birds and vegetation by the turn of the 21st century, giving hope to conservationists. Perhaps the sheep on the island were truly offsetting the natural habitat. However, one may reason that the sheep being there could be just as natural as their adaptation to the place. After all, lions are basically believed to be indigenous to Africa. However, migration to Asia saw an Asian subspecies that roam freely in Asia. Smaller in body and manes, these beasts found a home in Asia, thrived, and became a natural part of its ecosystem, so much so that now they are protected by wildlife reserves as a native species to Asia. The story of the Campbell Island sheep is fascinating, intriguing, and self-revealing of human nature and effect. It is fascinating that evolutionary changes, often stated to take thousands of years, some even millions, were noted in these sheep within half a century. From their jaws and legs, to their behaviors, mating and birthing patterns, their history showed how the quest for survival plays a significant role in evolution, so much that it seems nature did skip a few steps. It is intriguing to note how genetic modifications may go in different ways and remain even after certain conditions are removed. Decades later, these sheep that were kept and bred in New Zealand, although now presently living in private ownership within a controlled environment, still show the adapted features gained by their ancestors while on the island. This shows that genetic modifications acquired due to conditions and adaptation may be well retained after conditions warranting them are removed. The Campbell Island sheep were initially bred for wool and were unable to shed off excess fleece themselves. Living without shearers made these beautiful creatures reacquire their ability to shed off excess fleece. There have been instances of sheep lost in the forest for years only to be rescued with what we could call a mountain of excess fleece. What if harsh conditions give the superpower to reacquire lost genes? The sheep of Campbell Island tell a story born of human intervention. Well, human tampering may be a better word. Genetically bred for wool, these sheep were brought to the island on lease. Offsetting the normal flora of the environment for personal gain, humans introduced species that were not built for the terrain, nor the terrain built to cater to them. On the flip side, when profits were no longer coming in, the sheep were abandoned on the island without any form of protection or means to survive. And after turning feral, when there was renewed interest in the island, the sheep that were introduced had to be culled, without first attempting to see if they could coexist with the environment they had adapted to thrive in. Feral or not, the Campbell Island sheep had come to know the island as home. Campbell Island is protected by UNESCO today, and its natural vegetation and wildlife seem to be thriving at rates close to what existed before human intervention. The remaining descendants of the purebred Campbell Island sheep are continually watched by some farmers and advocates, and they symbolize adaptation and survival against all odds. They are resounding proof that while nature doesn't skip, it can run through many steps quicker than we can blink when the situation arises. In a twist, 
The Campbell Island sheep also show the cruel effect of tampering with nature. Aside from the effect on the island, the sheep were forced to adapt to harsh conditions, with most of the population dying out due to those same conditions. Bittersweet? But the Campbell sheep aren't alone in this curious category of animals that changed far faster than anyone expected. Biologists often point to the Lazarus fish of Lake Victoria, or the famous London underground mosquito which adapted into its own distinct form in just a few decades of living underground. In Australia, dingoes descended from domestic dogs introduced thousands of years ago took on entirely new hunting behaviors and body structures to thrive as apex predators. These examples remind us that evolution is not just a slow, ancient process locked in fossils. It can unfold right in front of us within a human lifetime. What's especially fascinating about the Campbell sheep is that they blur the line between native and introduced. Conservationists saw them as outsiders that damaged fragile island ecosystems, but if you take the long view of nature, every species is a migrant at some point in history. The question becomes, at what stage does a newcomer stop being an intruder and start being part of the ecosystem's story? For the Campbell sheep, 50 years wasn't enough time for us to grant them that status, yet their adaptations were so unique that they became living experiments in survival and natural selection. There's also an eerie modern parallel here. As climate change accelerates, species around the world are already shifting their behaviors, breeding times, and even body sizes in response to warming, droughts, and rising seas. The Campbell sheep give us a clue at how drastic and sometimes ingenious these changes can be, but they also serve as a warning. While some creatures adapt, many more simply vanish. Do you think the Campbell Island sheep are a jarring reminder of human mishandling, or a reminder that evolution is a beautiful concept? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you made it this far, please remember to like and subscribe for more updates like these.